Watching me, we gotta wait for Nathan. I'm excited, Brendan. <laughs> Nathan, hurry! He's doing b- bad things. <sighs> They're good. Oh, they can't be any worse than this movie. I don't want to watch this movie. Oh no 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 no! Oh, Montrose, Montrose, Montrose! Come here, come here, come here. Yes, what would you like? Look, um, how would you like to be on another episode of the of the podcast? You know, uh, we got a movie this week and it's it's set in England. Um, and I think I, I really I think it would be good for you to do this. Human Centipede 2. Uh, I'm sorry. What was that? Human Centipede 2. Oh, no, I don't. I don't think I'll be watching that. Um, I know. No, not at all. Uh, no, but it's it's set in England. You watch the Spice Girls movie. Yes. You see what that was? That was actually quite ingenious. Uh, that movie was also enjoyable. Uh, and, and as far as I've heard, this is not, uh, nor does it involve any sort of wrestling whatsoever. So uh, it's really, it's, it's out for me. But no, but you, you've been on before. This could be like another, you could be up, I think this will put you up to five if you're on to it. You know, you could be, a, you know, a five-time recurring guest. You you did for Congo and that. The, yes, you see, but yes, but that was a movie about, you know, gorillas and those are my people. And, and this is just, it, it's trash and possibly some sort of international crime. So no, I don't. I don't think I'll be watching uh, that. Uh, thank you. More later. <sighs> oh God, I don't want to watch this movie. I really don't want to watch this movie. Who is this sweeping up the floor? Milos, 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 come here. Oh yes, Mister Nathan. I. Uh, how can they help you? Look, how would you like to be on an entire? episode of the show you you could be like a guest host in my place oh that would i would enjoy most gratefully could send money back home to mother your your mom is still alive yes she's frail in body but strong in heart like everyone in the old country what movie would you be watching human centipede 2 i'm sorry i didn't catch that human centipede 2 Oh, no, I would not be wanting to watch that at all. Oh, come on, but think of all the feet, you know? There's 12 people in this one, so that's like human centipede, too. Not not made in an old country. It is, um, how you say, weak sauce in comparison. It's, it's, it, Milos goes big or he go home. Fine. Brent's showing yes. me his dick because he's trying to be oh. as big as Mariah. It's hard. Spooky Month continues here on the What Were They Thinking podcast, a podcast where we talk about bad to questionable movies. I am Brendan, and joining me is the B to my A, uh, Nathan. Just in spirit of the movie, right? This uh, this this terrific film that we're going to talk about this week on the podcast, uh, which is, of course, The Human Centipede. Dose? Should we make the same jokes as last uh, last week? Uh, zwei, uh, <laughs> de, yeah. Uh, number two, right. number two, yes. huh? Yes. Huh? Dose. Ah, number, in many ways. Definitely number two. Uh, yeah, big old pile of number two. In fact, my notes are t- are actually titled "Human Centipede 2. Are you happy? Are now, you happy, Brent? Yeah, it's weird that you had mentioned Brent. Oh, it's because we have a guest. Ladies and gentlemen, our, our our promise from, oh, I don't know, four years ago has come true. <laughs> Brent is here. Brent from the Home Video Hustle to help us talk about this movie. Brent, what's going on? It's going great right now. I'm just here to help you talk about this lovely, fantastic family picture 
I'm going to bring Nathan's spirits up. That's my goal this whole episode. I'm going to make Nathan smile. He's going to enjoy this movie by the end of it. Well, that that is a lofty goal. I've done harder shit. <laughs> yeah, Brendan's face was the best. You guys should have saw that, but you didn't. Nathan, um, would you rather watch this or uh, Kelsey Monroe? Who's Kelsey Monroe? Oh, come on. Yeah, come on. Yeah. You guys, you gotta get the banana shot out the pussy hole. Oh, it's the banana porn girl. Okay, the banana porn. Well, probably that then. I mean, it's just a banana. Yeah. Learn the lore, Nathan. Sorry, I stopped. I stopped tracking it's your show. Uh, the name of porn stars <laughs> around the, like the early two thousands. <laughs> <laughs> now we say the word porn star for Kelsey Monroe. I just want to go back to that for a second. Oh, oh okay. Star is a strong word, but she's but you made her a star with your podcast because of that banana episode. Though. We are star makers. That's true. Exactly. Yeah. You just got to put bananas in your pussy, and we make you a star. <laughs> that's our that's our motto. <laughs> yeah, bam! See, he's smiling. He smile. We we getting him. We getting him. So, um, as always, we are all uh, super gross dudes, and we're gonna talk about yes. a super gross movie. Called The Human Centipede 2, directed and written once again by Tom Six. Who? Uh, the guy that did the first one. Ah. And the third l- one. And nothing else. Illustrious career. Illustrious career. Until the, until the fourth one. You know it's coming. So, ladies and gentlemen, we need to get into this movie. We need to just dive right in into mm-hmm. the human set of P2. Pitter patter. Yeah. Let's get at her, as Nathan likes to say. And yeah. now, uh, Brent, we need to talk about what? The plot. Oh, that was, oh, that was a peaker right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah it sure was. <laughs> well, let's talk about the plot. Um, this movie is about a uh, gross little man named Martin. And he is a huge fan. He's what you would call a stan of the first film. Ah. Yeah. Of the, the first human aren't. centipede movie. Yeah. yeah he's, a, he's a total hipster. You can tell <laughs> just by looking at him. Yeah. Uh, it's the glasses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. The glasses and yeah. And the crowbar. Just a total hipster move. Um, but he's a big fan of the first human centipede movie. He watches it all the time. He um, does stuff to himself while he watches it. And he's trying to essentially build his own centipede because he's just such a huge mega fan of the movie. And by doing that, uh, he's just going out into the car park uh, or parking garage where he works as a security guard and just randomly hitting people on the head with his crowbar and tying them up and bringing them to this other area. Let's not um, forget that he is developmentally delayed. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it's a very uh respective uh respectful portrayal. Of course. Um, <laughs> so he's dragging people into this room. He wants to eventually create the centipede. And does he? Let's find out. I didn't <sighs> skip over anything. That's the basic plot. That's the what? Th- that's the basic Oh yeah. Oh, plot. I thought there you were gonna say see. No, I gotta leave it to you. You're <laughs> oh, here. Okay. Fuck it, yeah. do it live, as you say. Yeah, hey, there you go. Leave it all in, Brennan. So this movie starts with previously on the human centipede. But then we come to find out that the human centipede is a movie that exists within its own sequel. Mm-hmm. It's, it's meta, really man. more of an ostrovos than it is a centipede. And by the way. <laughs> A total um, weird coincidence that we did two sequels in a row. I didn't plan it like this, but th- that's how it happened. <laughs> yeah, we turn. It finds out that uh, this little this little Martin guy is watching the uh, the first movie at work. Which I'm. How did how is how is his boss uh, not not caught on to this by now? Uh, he's got his laptop out and he's watched it. He just keeps watching it, rewinding, watching and rewinding, watching and rewinding. Nobody else seems to work there, so maybe that's no. how he gets it off. Well, for a second, too, I was like, he either is the only one that works there or, like, he doesn't actually work there. I was convinced for a while that he just, like, found a uniform and just <laughs> sat there and watched Human Centipede just so he could see the security cameras where everyone was. He's a volunteer, then, Bernie. Yeah, he's a volunteer <laughs> security guard <laughs> at an office building. <laughs> or who knows what that is. It, it's it's a, a parking garage in the city. I um, want to know how. Now a parking garage attendant in England is armed. It, now, does it take oh, place yeah. in England? 
Yes. Okay. Everybody, everybody's talking like this, Gov. The fella That's upstairs, true. his mum, the doctor who comes to see him, all the people he banks on the noggin. That's true. <laughs> You're right. I can't, I, I can't argue log- logic there. The first thing he does is interrupt an arguing couple in the parking garage, and he interrupts as only one, a security guard can do by shooting the guy in the foot and the face and then uh, hitting his girlfriend with a crowbar. I thought he killed them, by the way. Right yeah, I thought he killed beginning. everybody that got hit with a crowbar should have fucking died. Every he, one of them. He smucks them in the head. Yeah, it ain't like no yeah. little love tap. He's like, and there's the sound effects are like, crack. I think it's hilarious that this guy, I mean, sure, he has a gun, but I think it's hilarious that nobody has been able to overpower this guy. <laughs> like, he's too good at his job, he, right? Now. He's going around and he he's, you know, you know killing uh, people and, and beating them on top of the head and Come to find out later what he's really doing with it, and and you know of all this, it's still not the worst life choice he ever made. Of course, the worst one being watching the first Human Centipede movie. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Take so you're not saying, a fan. So, so, <laughs> nope. Uh, see, overhyped past- garbage. Woo! Hot yes. take. Well, I mean, uh, see past episode for proof. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're saying that uh, being a fan of the first movie is worse than uh, beating people in a parking garage and trying to stitch them together? Uh, yes. What happens okay. later, he makes some other terrible life choices. Well, I should clarify, hitting these, this, shooting the boyfriend and, and hitting the girlfriend and kidnapping her for experiments, this is the worst life choice he's made up to this point. Oh. We see him make several terrible, more terrible ones much later but we'll yeah. get to that when we have to <laughs> well he drags them away we don't know what's going on yet um but i do know that on his laptop whenever he rewinds a movie it sounds like he's rewinding a vhs tape which, which didn't make bullshit. any sense I, yeah. call, I was watching this and i was like fuck this movie that's the most unrealistic thing in this movie fuck that when you watch it on the computer you you hit the button and you just start at the beginning you don't rewind this shit yeah. fuck you tom six <laughs> fake <laughs> I, I I I agree with your last sentiment there. Fuck you, Tom Six. <laughs> oh, You're I thought you just meant fake. <laughs> no, 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 fuck you. Tom I'm gonna. Six. I'm good. I'm just gonna hot take. This movie is not a documentary. Fuck this movie. <laughs> I thought you were about to say hot take. I love this movie. I was waiting mm-hmm. for it. Mm-hmm. It's nope. coming. Well, he gonna surprise y'all at the end with this score or whatever. I, you know Worth it. Worth a watch. <laughs> yeah, all day, er day. <laughs> no, uh, so Martin is, uh, yeah, he's he's obsessed with this movie. He's beating up couples. He uh, he's and looking his through his his what? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> what did you say? I said and his dick. <laughs> uh, well, that later. Let's let's yeah. wait. That's coming up. I'm sorry. I I, I tease it. So you gotta keep yeah. listening. He's beating his dick, but you don't know how, and, okay. guys. <laughs> So he's a he's obviously he's a, as you said a stan as the kids like to say yeah. of the first one, but he's existing in the sequel. So does mm-hmm. that mean that he is existing in the movie he's waiting for to come out? Because anybody who's a fan of anything is waiting for a sequel so that they can see more of what happened in in the other movie. He could this, also this, be a- it's, this movie is a snake eating its tail. <laughs> it's gonna be like space balls he's gonna put the tape in and just watch yourself back later yeah <laughs> space balls is a slightly better movie than this just uh, slightly. Uh, just, just slightly, slightly. Yeah. yeah so so he's looking through his human centipede scrapbook um as one does, as one does yeah <laughs> <laughs> and he goes off to buy uh or to get a lease on like this warehouse is he doing this at one in the morning i don't yeah. think so Cause it's like it's like pitch black outside, and the guy's like, "Oh yeah, God, you won't go sell you the lease. Come on, you can make me an offer. Or what? I got. I don't know what he says." Brendan, that is highly offensive, and I am ashamed that you just did that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, that's the most offensive thing here and movie. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So he's trying to buy this place where he can store all his uh, experiments, and the guy's like. You know, you're going to pay me. And then, of course, we just cut. This is, I will give the movie. Okay, we're going to get some credit here Ooh. for a second. Oh, I, oh I've I got do, credit for this movie. And I'm oh, willing to get into that. Oh, I do kind of like. But it gets I, spent and that goes into overdraft really quickly at the end. <laughs> I do kind of <laughs> like the jump cut 
where he says like, oh, you, 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 you know, you give me money for the lease, you're going to sign the lease. And it jumps to like him having already beaten the landlord to death or whatever, or like beaten mm-hmm. him up anyway. Um, so that was kind of interesting. I will say right now, though, and I mentioned this to Nathan after we had both seen the movie, the movie makes the ultimate mistake of his character is like, I don't like how they start off and he's already killing people. He's already a psychopath. Like, uh. build that up. Start off with him getting abused, getting harassed. So we kind of feel like a little bit of sympathy. And then when he goes off the deep end, we're like, oh, shit. Okay, now I'm not on his side anymore. Because the way it is, I'm just not on his side the whole time. And I don't care about anyone. No. You know, like, you can't can't really get invested if the person you're following is just a bag of shit. You don't know why they're a bag of shit. Brendan, we only got 90 minutes. There's plenty of time. We we need centipede. I'm not saying add things. I'm just saying flip the order around. And here's here's my take on this. If they had left the whole centipede thing out and not made this a human centipede, so go, I think if Tom Six, if he wrote this, he had a legitimate other hit on his hand that had nothing to do with this. It, because of what we find out, this guy, he's developmentally delayed. His dad abused him went to prison, his mom, who he has to live with because he's an adult and can't look after himself, she resents him for the reason why. He's the reason why dad's in prison. The doctor that's supposed to be looking after him is also trying to molest him, Mm -hmm. you know. And people are obviously, they don't take him seriously at work because he's he's a rent cop So if this whole movie had just been his unraveling, his descent into madness and becoming a serial killer... The one hour, 90 minutes, and it ends with him when the jig is up. No centipede at all. This movie would be great. And I would I don't think it would be on our show. Nathan, Nathan. It's directed by Tom Six. I know. He's lazy and awful. Black and white doesn't automatically make your movie classy. Criterion. The bread says criterion. What's your <laughs> what's your rebuttal, Nathan? <laughs> Uh, it, it, this would get Criterion after Danzig's Veronica got Criterion, okay? So that Wait. happens, give me a call. Uh, and, can I ask you a question? Um, don't you think it, it's a gimme to just make Critters on the Criterion collection? Like, wouldn't that be just an obvious choice? Right, because they're the Crites. Yeah. And that, that actually movie, that movie does deserve the Criterion treatment. <laughs> I need to watch that one day. I've never seen it. I actually, I, I'll, I, I've got some stuff for the what you've been watching for later. You might oh. be interested in, so oh, we'll, we'll say that when we get to it. But yes, black and white doesn't make your movie automatically classy. And for some reason, I have at least they didn't make him take a whiff. I don't know why that note is there. I don't know. Either. <laughs> he gets a. We we learned that this uh, Martin fella is trying to get the actors from the from the first movie. Because he gets a voicemail from the uh, from the agent of I guess he's all three actors agents. <laughs> he says uh, no, no. There's a different agent uh, for the other girl. Because remember, it's a female that calls well, from later. Okay, I didn't catch for, anything in this voicemail. By the way, it's an agent for two of the three people. Where he's basically like, yeah, they can't come down or whatever. Yeah. Um. So Martin, in turn, uh, brutally murders the guy that he uh, kidnapped earlier. We see him at home. And a lot more of him than I was uh, comfortable with seeing, which then gets a lot worse later. So, <laughs> um, but his mother nope. is basically telling him, like, you got to go see the doctor. You smell like sh- you smell like you shit yourself. You shit again. yourself again. <laughs> again. 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 Um, I thought at first, so he's having like, he's clearly having like audio flashbacks, but I thought at first that the neighbor upstairs was, was saying, you just making daddy's willy harder when you hear like the baby crying. And I was like, <laughs> why is that in the movie? But that makes why a little not? Because sense this, this, background. this movie is like David Lynch's kid begging for a hug. That's what this movie is. <laughs> like it's, it's trying to be surreal and and odd and thought provoking, which it is in the first like hour, conservatively. Honestly, though, I don't even think it's that it's super straightforward as far as I'm concerned, because it's just a guy going and like uh, hitting people on the head and putting them in a warehouse over and over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. I just mean all the weird like 
I don't know, the, the weird shots that happen and the audio cues, like you said, with the baby crying and the neighbor with his upstairs music. And, you know, British Dave Letterman is apparently his doctor. <laughs> like, there's some weird stuff going on in this movie. And that's that not including the centipede stuff. Like, just in and of itself, all the stuff beforehand is also really odd, shot intriguingly, and lit interestingly. Yep. Well, as you mentioned, um, well, before, I mean, before this, of course, the mother walks in and interrupts before I'm assuming Martin is getting ready to jerk it to a picture of Ashlyn Yenny from the first movie. Uh, there's a very subtle, very subtle cue because he's got a pet centipede. Right. Do you get it? Hmm? Like most people do. Yeah. Well, you, how's your pet centipede doing, Brent? Don't make it's a dick dead. joke. It's dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it got soft. <laughs> yeah. It's very flaccid right now. Oh, because you're talking about this movie. Yeah. What okay. What are you talking about? Oh, can I read something real quick? I'm sorry. While y'all were talking, I, I have something that may open up the perspective of Tom Six and may answer some of Nathan's questions. I, I found something here. Okay. Is it an interview where he says he was dropping his head repeatedly as a child? <laughs> yes, but not that okay. part, though. It says, according to Six, he intentionally made this very different from the first movie for two reasons. First, when he was writing the script for the first movie, he knew people want more, quote, blood and shit than is shown. Second, the two parts reflected different characters. The colored first movie with a slow moving camera fit the story of Dr. Heiter, while Martin's character required a, quote, dark and dirty film. He shot the first one in color, but was always thinking about black and white and realized while editing that it was much scarier that way. It was also his idea to have little dialogue in this film's second half, except for moans, screams and whimpers because of the fear. Yeah. So, Nick, what do you think? Be- best movie ever now? No. no. Oh, okay. No. Um, you don't appreciate the art? <laughs> uh, the, I appreciate the, the first hour of this movie. <laughs> I, I honestly think, do. Listen, I think also the black and white is also a censor thing because I think yep. it's like a Kill Bill situation where it's like yeah. you can show a lot more if it's in black and white, which really makes no sense at all. It's <laughs> like, dumb, yeah. <laughs> it's so stupid. Like, I can still tell that it's MPA, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. here's the thing. If he's if he's European, I know he probably. I I don't see this thing ever seeing. Would have ever seen a wide release. I don't. The only thing I think he'd be concerned about, as far as MPAA stuff goes, is just getting being allowed to be, I don't know, in shops in England because there's no want to be a video nasty. It it I it, if it wasn't, it was very close to one because it was censored heavily in a lot of countries. Um, yeah. So we meet the psychiatrist, uh, Martin's psychiatrist, who's also uh, British molesting David him. David Letterman molesting him, yes. Because, you know, why not? Sure, put that character in there. Uh, absolutely pointless. Here today because your mother is very worried about you. He keeps on talking about a centipede with 12 people. What does that mean? No. Let's see. The centipede can be considered a phallic symbol. Centipedes are very aggressive creatures. Their bite can be very painful. Maybe he's connecting the pain that a centipede inflicts with the pain inflicted on him through use of psychological and sexual abuse by his father. Um, it, it, the thing is, too, it's like... This is this is the issue. I talked about how we've already seen him as a psychopath murdering people or like, you know, he's killed someone already. Mm-hmm. And this the psychiatrist is like touching Martin's leg and stuff and getting all creepy. And I'm like, if you want us to feel bad for him, we can't have already seen him as a monster. Yeah. You got to put could. that later. Yeah. But the art, Brendan. <laughs> no, Don't. if it's legitimate art, there's got to be it's got to be an unraveling. He's got to kind of have it together at first and then it unwinds as, as the movie goes on. But see, that's how you interpreted it, though. See, that's, well, Brent, that's the art, homie. You got to see you saw it that way. But that's are you going to try to works. tell me that I should be sympathetic to the, you know, hero and don't breathe, too? Yes. No, he's a lunatic. I've never he's seen a that movie, kidnapping yes. rapist lunatic. He's not a hero. Man, see, I see. know I'm not going to see that movie based on premise alone. Y'all don't <laughs> believe in the power of redemption? It's a new day. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, Human Centipede 2. 
I wrote down that this is my nightmare, the booming music from upstairs. Uh, that oh, is and so... The mom's got a, a pretty useless broom that she uses to knock on the ceiling. There was like, there was no sweeping straw on that broom at all. Nope. <laughs> uh, but that guy gets so pissed that he comes down and just like fucks up Martin for a bit, like beats him up. But because mm-hmm. that's the thing. Mom is the one who's upset about it. She bangs yeah. on the ceiling. He comes downstairs and home invades. Let's be honest here yeah. into mm-hmm. their house. Cause I'm guessing she didn't invite him in. Uh, and she says, he's upset about it. She basically throws her son under the bus to get beat up by this tattooed Neanderthal who lives upstairs. She and also says, please nothing kill but- us both. She wants yeah. to kill him. Yeah. I thought she did let them in because I thought he knocked on the door and she got up and then came back and sat down again. Oh, well maybe that is the case. And, and if she did request to be killed, then maybe mm-hmm. she did let them in. Uh, well, let them please, in so. please kill us both. <laughs> please, sir. Can you kill us both? Can I have another bullet? <laughs> For my Valentine. <laughs> mm. so, Still yeah, not he comes... over, Nathan? Still nothing? <laughs> <laughs> what if instead of Bruce, she just shot into the ceiling? Would that have made you smile? She wouldn't have been able to. It's England. Where'd she get a gun? But see, see, again, see, that's what you think. Wait, Charlie, we in Canada and America, we don't know how they roll up there. Wait, they are you saying guns are really sparse and hard to come by? <laughs> are you at saying least by the general public? You gotta put your mind to it, Nathan. Are you saying shot into the ceiling or shotted? Shotted it into the shotted it into the ceiling. Shot it into the ceiling. <laughs> shotted. She shot it into the ceiling. Bananas. That's right. See, you make it make it fun of me. See, you gonna get in trouble now. You make it fun of people. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. Don't listen I to me. I was referencing sorry. banana porn. I know. Oh, oh, Phil, Brad, Brad, my, my wife says chose it all the time. I'm like, <laughs> do you mean chose? <laughs> oh, I didn't even think you said shot it. I just asked if she shot it. Oh, bro, I'm just fucking with you, Brad. <laughs> no, you're not. This conversation oh. is over. Oh, okay. What were they thinking? This conversation is quickly becoming a confrontation. Um, that's, right. that's the beef. That's how you get the listeners in. Fake <laughs> right. beef like now, rappers. Yeah, so now Brent and PJ are going to do a diss track, and then we got to right. respond. I got, I got my lyrics ready. Oh, shit. Yeah. All right, let's go. I'm, I got my pin. Oh, I threw my pin. I, Fuck. I got my <laughs> mom's spaghetti. So, human said to me, too. Yes. Um, yeah. Martin is, uh, Martin is uh, he should have a, po- a movie podcast, because he's super good at taking notes while watching a movie. Um, <laughs> he's even able to draw the entire diagram of the centipede uh, oh. layout. I saw those at... Asterixes. I thought he was drawing cats. <laughs> yeah, movie, he's do- movie cats. He's yeah, drawing but the the butthole <laughs> cut. Yeah, yeah, he's drawing the butthole cut. He's actually the uh, storyboard artist for the butthole oh, cut of cats. Oh shit! It makes sense now. It's also that like, this movie is like so lazy on top of being like stupid because it's like um he's evil because um he was molested. The end. Tom like that's <laughs> Tom Six exactly. <laughs> Uh, Martin then uh, goes into the uh, parking garage and sees a family getting in their car. So he shoots at the car and takes the uh, beats the man's head with a crowbar, makes goo goo gaga sounds at the baby, and then puts the baby back in the car. And then you know, now beats drive the mother. yourself home, kid. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm, I'm assuming he did. That kid's fine. Yeah, he'd be all right. He's tough. Um, right? <laughs> kids, kids drive, drive themselves home all, home all the time. time. <laughs> he'd be all right, B. Tough, right? Uh, so he, yeah, he beats he beats both the parents up and just leaves that baby to I don't know probably starve to death in that car. Um, I'm assuming someone will find him eventually. Uh, he's he puts them in his little warehouse thing and then he starts watching his movie again. And guys, this is where he decides to take his dick out. And do we see it? Yep. And he uses sandpaper and yeah. masturbates with sandpaper. That's how tough he is. Like and you've we never see done it, it Brendan. What? <laughs> Like you've never done it. <laughs> I do it with the other side of the sandpaper. I'm a pussy. Oh. Certainly gives new t- new terminology to the term dry rub. Because mm. normally Ooh. you do a dry rub on a roast, right? But this time he's doing it to his penis with sandpaper. <laughs> yeah. Chop, we got, chop, babe. We, we got to look up. <laughs> next thing we got to look up, Brendan, is sandpaper porn. It's not banana. Nope. No. <laughs> Hard no. <laughs> Hard no. Not even that's not even a joke. Just a joke. <laughs> uh, because we see a close up of his dick bleeding, and I think I've I've seen yeah. all I need to see from that. Oh, he pisses blood too at one point, right? 
yeah, because he's been jerking off with fucking yeah. sandpaper and like getting the shit beat out of him by his neighbor. <laughs> um, so anyway, after the sandpaper masturbation, um, <laughs> there's some party girls in the parking garage and they're all oh. partying and they're partying and they're so excited and yay. And you got to have club girls. You can't, you, <laughs> you can't not to. have a human centipede movie without club girls. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But they're not even like attacked. They're attacked off screen because one of them just says, "There's a little, there's a little, uh, little person." Well, she doesn't say little person, but there's a little person masturbating in the in there or whatever. He's in there wanking off. Yeah, he's in wanking there. He's wanking. In there. Little person wanking in there, and then uh, they get kidnapped <laughs> too. Yeah. Um, Ain't that another jump cut, or am I tripping? No, it's another the, jump cut. Okay. This is when he gets, and this is when we he gets the other phone call. Yes. From the uh, like a, a female, uh, that's why I said it's not he's not calling the same agents, they don't have the same agent because mm-hmm. this girl calls him and says she'd love to come and audition for Mr. Tarantino's movie. Okay, and here's the thing, too oh, this guy, okay. Martin, never we never hear him talk, right? No. I don't think he talks to anyone. So, do you really is he's calling this casting agency being like. They're like Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> oh wow, the new Tarantino movie. You want Ashlyn Yenny? <laughs> okay. I believe what, that. What message is he leaving? <laughs> Any PR agent speaks fluent dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> and also, how do you think there, Flipper kept getting work? But also, <laughs> there are there are things in place like casting agencies know who their contacts are. They're not just like, oh, you work for Quentin Tarantino? Yeah, I believe you. Uh, again, are, are you? Are we really going to call into question the laziness of one Tom Six? Of Tom course Six we brain. are. One thousand percent, we we are. Fuck him. Ew. <laughs> well, I mean, you were in telling a me figurative early. sense. So I you, mean, you were telling me earlier, Brent, that you would sandpaper his ass. I mean, but not with my dick. <laughs> okay, you were doing you were doing a motion like this, like you're holding a dick. So I don't know. No, what no, he's no. what he has done here is he has taken the sandpaper and wrapped it around a dildo, and oh. is actually re- repeatedly ramming it into Tom Six's anal cavity. You are well, projecting like, your fantasies onto me, Brendan. You stop this right now. When in Rome, <laughs> get the sand or the UK. <laughs> Guys, how about that awkward moment when you go, you get up in the middle of the night to take a piss and you come back to your bedroom and your mom is stabbing a pile of clothes thinking it was your body? <laughs> Crazy. That's every weekend. That's normal. <laughs> so that's what happens. Martin <laughs> leaves the room and his mom tries to fucking kill him. And then she, doesn't she, he, like, she, yeah, exactly. Yeah. She what? But she cuts herself. Uh, actually, I have the note. Oh, come on, mom! Up the road, not across the street. <laughs> oh. Well, Pro the thing tips. is, she she cuts herself, and it's supposed to be like, and then, but then that's like kind of ignored. <laughs> like they don't really. Oh well, that, I guess that is going to come into play at the end when we get to that spoiler ah. about her cutting herself. Uh, no, the ending, the end, end, the last scene. But we'll get to that when we get to that, I guess, won't we? Oh, he's okay, confused. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you mean. Just her, just her cutting her wrist. Okay. No, no, but the, that weird shit not being like ever addressed. Oh no, I just meant like that particular thing oh. though is that she cuts her wrist and then <laughs> just proceeds through the movie. I'm like, wait a second, <laughs> you know, just yeah. do that without her like collapsing or something. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I cannot wait to hear Nathan when we get to the end of this fucking movie. That's gonna be the best. I know it's coming. <laughs> Oh, uh, the rage carry two. Yeah, electric boogaloo. Um, had to yep. do it. I had to do it. I'm sorry. It has two subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the yeah, the mother, you know, thinks she's she kills him, and then she's like, "Oh shit, awkward. You were in the bathroom. Mom, love you." Uh, she finds his a uh, human centipede scrapbook and just destroys it. Much too much. I noted, uh, your mom threw away your best porno mag. Busted. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta fight. I would say, Brittany, you gotta right. fight. There you go. <laughs> to Brittany, to murder. To <laughs> um. So yeah, she that happens, and then Martin decides to uh, get his pet centipede to bite his mom, and then just beats her fucking face in with a crowbar, murdering yeah. her. 
Mm-hmm. He he sets up he sets up his uh, dead mom with the caved in face at as the dinner do. table. As yeah, you as do. you do, as you do. Yeah. It's only polite. You've murdered yeah, her. Yeah, you know, you, do yeah. your part. You already murdered her. You got at least fucking prop her up, man. Come on now, decency. And then the and, music starts. Oh. Yeah, the music starts upstairs. Um, he decides he decides this time to bang on the ceiling with the broom. The guy comes down and he says a lot of shit. And then Martin just he, he sees the mother and he's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> and uh, Martin just starts beating the shit out of him too, and shoots him in the in the foot, I think, or in the leg. He shoots him in the leg. Shoots him in Somewhere. the leg. Yeah, below the knee, he... so it's technically not considered uh, attempted murder. <laughs> well, he's smart. Burr, he's burr, gotta... burr. Do you now? Does this guy? This guy gets put in the room, right? Yes, mm-hmm. sir. Okay. Yeah, and then Martin again takes another viewing party of human centipede and poops himself while doing it. Oh yeah, he does poop himself. I mean, come on, you, you got to, right? Come on, you, you got to. Well, and then and, we cut to, yeah. I'm sure, Brent's Exa- favorite scene. Yeah, because <laughs> if him pooping himself while watching the human centipede wasn't gross enough for you, there's an awesome three-way with this really, uh, I'm assuming as a lorry driver, uh, a cheap fucker, and uh, Martin's doctor in a car. Your pussy smells gorgeous. I don't t-shirt. think it does. <laughs> as a t-shirt? Yeah, that's a t-shirt line right there. Put your face on it. Exactly. It, it, that's another t-shirt. That's the back of the shirt. <laughs> Put your face on it. <laughs> I'm giving y'all ideas today. That's free. I ain't charging. Yeah, he's he's just this big dude is just in the front seat smelling his like wet fingers. Yeah, and, and they're wet. You can see him glistening even in black. Oh and white. yeah. The yes, psychiatrist is getting blown by the prostitute, and he says, "I'd rather fuck the." R word guy, but this'll do. Which is like, and oh. he offers her how he asks her how much it would be to do it in the bum, and she says fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. That's an entertainment value. I mean, Man. really, friend price. You're, you know, yeah. That was fucking sensational. Mm. And you know what? Your pussy smells gorgeous. Is that guy like her pimp or something? The guy in the front? No, because he's putting his fingers in. He's, he's, well, pimps do sometimes fuck. Right. Too, though, so yep. pimps, that's I don't how, know. I don't you, think that's how you keep them broke. Actually, yeah, I don't know, yeah. guys. I Nathan, think a pimp has never Nathan had has sex a with life. their own prostitute. I'm just gonna say what? That. Ever? We gotta make him watch American Pimp one day, Nathan. There you go. <laughs> 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 the very least, Dolomite. Yeah, man. Oh, when's that coming up on the podcast? <laughs> I've only seen my name as Dolomite. Uh, yeah. Martin, uh, of course, makes an appearance here and, uh, and, and kills the fat guy. And then, uh, what does he, what does he do here? He kills he the doctor, kills the doctor, the doctor mm. begs off and Martin kills him. And then the prostitute runs away. Uh, and she, okay, this is dumb. She gets to the steps. She gets, she like escapes in the steps. Martin's have like an, having like an asthma attack. And she's like, she manages to pepper spray him. He is completely blinded. He can't do anything. And she, she doesn't just, do anything either. Yes, she just fucking lays there. Oh, and I'm like, even also, if your leg is broken, grab uh, his face and smother him. He sees the kid. The kid is still there in the card park from the earlier. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I have the note here. Kid, I told you to drive home. <laughs> <laughs> grab that Pedal wheel and haul ass. And then <laughs> as he uh, is, I don't know taking care of the dumbest prostitute because she didn't run away after she maced the guy. She, he gets a phone call to say that she'd love to come for the audition. Ashlyn Yenny is on her way to stardom to be in the next Quentin Tarantino movie. Yeah. <laughs> also, I don't think... Okay, because he says, like, okay, I'm going to fly her out for an audition. I don't think you fly across the country just for a fucking audition. No, usually they would meet with a local casting director who would be working with the project. That's why you see all those, those, uh, you know, we'd like to thank. And it's like this, they thank the Georgia Film Commission. They thank people in Quebec. They thank people in New Zealand. It's like because they worked with folks locally before the movie or in post-production, possibly. Oh, also, uh, we kind of ran past this when they were he goes back to the uh, warehouse at one point and um, someone overhears the thing about the human centipede and the guy, what well, is a guy who figures it out that they're going to be centipeded. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, 
he he's like he's yelling about that, and uh, to which made me actually note that uh, just like the people in the the girls in the last movie, the people who were captured in this warehouse too dumb to live because they had literal days to escape. Martin goes to work like three times in this movie. That's three eight-hour shifts. Plus, he goes home to sleep because his mom first wakes him up thinking he shot himself, and then another (laughs) night he wakes up to go to the bathroom and she's stabbing a pile of clothes. So, I mean, these people had a long time to figure out an escape plan and didn't. But, they weren't but, tied down either, like the the you know the girls and the Japanese guy in the first one. They weren't strapped to a gurney or anything. But but Nathan, the, the door the door was locked. <laughs> I feel <laughs> that that you know janky warehouse in a rundown area of of London was probably not the Fort Knox he thought it was. Dead dead boss though. <laughs> Dumb people, though. Dumb, <laughs> dumb people, though. But, you know, they could have just even not, even if they didn't escape the door, like through the door, they could have the just, uh, exactly. They could have just got They could have ganged up on him when they came back. Just wait for him to come back. Exactly. Hmm. But that's criterion for you. Exactly. Um, it's the art. So Ashlyn Yenny uh, comes down and uh, he picks her up at the airport and she's kind of playing it's kind of funny it's kind of funny cuz she's kind of playing an exaggerated like showbiz version of herself like she's like I'll talk about all the behind the scenes stuff on the first movie and i said whoa 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 martin you are the villain because i actually am more interested in hearing about behind the scenes of the first movie <laughs> <laughs> cuz she's like you know she says like oh i we everyone had to uh take a shower every time we did the scene where we're stuck to each other cuz like you don't want someone's butt in your face and i was like tell me more tell me more ashlyn hey, tell oh, me and more how she tell had me. like a <laughs> How she had a rider in her uh, her contract where she got a, a one hour massage every day because uh, all the time they spent, you know, you know, all bent over walking like dogs. And I was like, you know what? I hope I hope that actually happened because that should have been a thing that happened. I, I saw that movie. That's not a thing that happened. Oh. Well, I mean, that movie had no fucking money. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Brent, I, Brent, I'm kind of hung up on this. Tell me more uh, song. You got some uh, some lyrics for us? I've never seen that movie before, so I have nothing. Like, did he have a nice car? Did you get very far? <laughs> tell me more, tell me more. Was your, Were you stitched to his ass? <laughs> tell me more, Lord. tell me more. Did he did shit he in your mouth? Did he break some some gas? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> did he shit in your mouth? Just skipping right to the right to the I meat. See, I, see, I just said, did he, did he break you some gas? I mean, that's... I was yeah. being... Wait about it. Brent just wants to know if he's shit in your mouth. Like, he's right. just cutting right to I the want, chase. I want to know. I'm like that one porn star where, hey, tangent, real quick. This is real shit. I'm not joking. <laughs> there was a porn star on a radio, <laughs> on a radio interview where she said, whenever she's with somebody and they go take a shit in the bathroom before they flush it, she wants to go in there and see what it looks like first. I'm not joking. Okay. That's a real. Interview. Did she? Did you expl- expound as to why? Because she likes shit. Oh, okay. I thought there might have been like, you know, there was something that she could discern if this person had like chlamydia just from their poops or something. Mm-hmm. Now she just liked the, the, we like the color and the mm-hmm. texture. The mm-hmm. off-handed she... spiral shape indicates gonorrhea. <laughs> right. See, you know coil... the... He coiled the cobra counterclockwise. <laughs> I knew he had the clap. <laughs> it's all, it's called, the, it's, it's called the uh, counterclockwise cobra coil for the clap <laughs> there you go see, 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 see. you know what he's talking about see he'd be looking at shit too yeah we all look at <laughs> shit guys we all look at yeah. shit hey once Speaking you get to of... a certain age you kind of have to make sure nothing's <laughs> going south you know in more ways than one anyhow uh... speaking of looking at shit not yet but soon um oh, yeah. we gotta so this I is also... where things really start going south for this movie and i also Fucking wrote down hard and I also wrote down part. Ashlyn, Ashlyn Yenny, come on, one look at this guy and you know you're being scammed. <laughs> like, yeah. why did you why did you get into his vehicle? <laughs> but I'm not going to victim blame. That's not what this podcast is about. He bonks her on the head and uh, he has everyone in the room. He starts cutting everyone's clothes off. He's feeding his centipede. It, like, this is He's literally performing surgery with steak knives and pliers. Um, this is the third act of the movie, and like obviously, besides that shit that we're gonna talk about that happens, um, it's just like 
screaming and wriggling and crying out and him laughing. And it's just basically that for like the next while. He, it's the art. I told you I read it. Tom Six said it's the art. That's, it was keep, made that way Why do you keep dropping the F in that word? <laughs> yeah, you keep forgetting it. I'm sorry. The Is arf, the F arf. silent in Columbus? Like, I don't know. I, I, it's the arf. I forgot. I'm sorry. It's, no, it's the fart. It's the fart. The That's what it is. The off. <laughs> it's, it's all about the off. <laughs> it's the prequel to All About the Benjamins. <laughs> <laughs> what is that coming up on the back? <laughs> I barely know what that movie is. <laughs> well, Ice Cube and Mike Epps. Come on, you can do that one. Oh, okay. See? Uh, so well, we'll see you in a couple months then. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> so Martin is admiring his tools. Wink, wink. And hey. uh, here we go, you guys. The moment we've all been waiting for. The operation. Yes. Um, but unfortunately, it's not like the game operation where if he does something wrong, it goes. Skip buzzed. If it did, you'd be hearing that the entire movie. I think at this point, too, he murders everyone who he figures doesn't fit the centipede. Because like he does kill a few people. Um, he, and, well, he one we think is dead and is not. Spoiler. Well, yeah, that that yep. Keep keep an eye on that. And you know what? I don't care how Pro run war. down and janky that neighborhood is that that warehouse is in. People would have heard the screams from no sedative knee surgery. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just and again, of course, he doesn't know what he's fucking doing because he's not a doctor. So he's stapling. He's like stapling shit. Eventually, yeah. Eventually, he's like he's accidentally killed a few people and he starts like crying out. So when in doubt, just staple their mouths to other people's butts. Staple that ass. Staple that ass. <laughs> Um, he does a uh, a fun little dance in celebration of his uh, wonky uh, constructed Feels centipede. Feels like he succeeded. Yep. Yep. Never Tries stop to... dreaming, kids. Never stop dreaming. He does. You can yeah. achieve your goals. He's living proof. Beef I cake. bet you. Beefcake. <laughs> <laughs> Solid you... South Park reference. Good lord. <laughs> I bet you... Get it in he there. He looks like Cartman. I never even thought of that. <laughs> Because the earliest note I have is this movie is proof that Piggy survived Lord of the Flies. Mm. Wow. Because he got the head trauma. Remember they dropped a rock on his head. Now all he can do is work in a car park and watch Human Centipede. So this it, it, movie exists in the cinematic universe as Lord of the Flies. So it goes from Lord of the Flies to Lord of the Brown to Eyes. Lord of the Flies Ooh. to Human Centipede. It's the insect thing. It's just tying it all together. Drinking, just drinking, <laughs> drinking, drinking. Yeah. Drinking. So, um, what I was gonna say is, uh, he he does, yeah, he does the dance. Now, I want to say that I wonder if it's thank it was God he Ashland. didn't make a little love. I want to say I wonder if it was in Ashland. Terrible. If it was in Ashland Yenny's contract that in this movie she got to be in the front because she was the last one. She was like way in the back in the original one. She's like, okay, listen, I'll do your fucking centipede two movie. I'm not putting my mouth on anyone's ass this time though. <laughs> That's after the shoot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, so of course, because now he's succeeded in his his uh, human, I don't know, centipede. didcapede. It's not a centipede. <laughs> There's only, they've only got 24 legs. 48, you know, if you count the arms as well. So, but of course, he has to take them for walkies. And he tries to uh, he tries to feed uh, dog food to uh, Ashlyn, and she's like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh," and hauls it across the room. So she starts yelling, and he cuts out her tongue. I thought he yanked it out, right? I'm not no, sure. he he cut it. He cut a thing that he cut it with. But I also, also oh. come on, dude, they're all being loud. Why you guys single her out? <laughs> she's in the front. She she's the front piece. So she got to take that hit. You are well, my A. Well, shit. Would you rather be the front or the back, knowing what's coming next, though? Uh, well, Brent. What 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 comes next? Oh, oh my, thank you. My note says ECW dick. <laughs> oh what? god. Because he has time with the rape oh, scene. No, I don't like that yeah. at all. See? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But that's mm-hmm. not what comes next because what comes next is he oh. intubates her with a food tube and feeds her and then feeds her laxative so she will then proceed to poop which ev- all the stitches start splitting shit is going everywhere and it was at this point Patty had come home okay <laughs> Patty had come home and I had told her before we watched this sweetheart you don't have to watch this movie with me. I, in fact, I would appreciate if you didn't watch this movie because it is terrible. It's probably going to be 
one of the worst movies we've ever watched. You don't have to watch it with me. She goes out for a bit. Then she comes home because she had to run some errands. And then she starts. She's like, oh, you're watching it. Eh? And I'm like, yeah, well, that'll be, it'll be OK. I'm just going to sit here and play on my phone. And she's sitting there and she's playing on her phone. But the noises, like the stuff that's going on, it kind of like it, it keeps making her pop her head up instinctively. And she's seeing all the ghastly things that are happening. And she's commenting on them. And I said, I said, don't watch. Just don't watch. Please don't watch. And so she said, okay. And so she takes her phone and she sticks it way up in front of her face. So it's in her field of vision. She can't see what's going on. But this scene happens next. And it's all poop sounds. Martin's going because they're pooping and poop is going everywhere. And I just slowly turn to my beautiful wife who i have been coupled with for coming on 25 years and said to her maybe you could stop listening to it as well <laughs> and she said to me you know the next time you say that i don't have to watch a movie with me with you and i shouldn't watch a movie with you i'm going to listen smart <laughs> um all I, got, I got a question i'm oh. sorry i got a question for you move on Oh, okay. Can, no, I was can, I was gonna talk about this scene okay. real quick. I was just okay. gonna say that everything that happened, but with, with the shitting and the pooping and him dancing and the farting noises he was making, I just questioned everything that led me up to this point <laughs> in my life. Yeah, you're welcome. All the decisions I made that led to me watching this scene. Yeah, yeah. you're welcome. Go ahead, Brian. But I got I got a question though. Yeah. He was injecting laxative directly into the ass cheek, right? Does that work yeah. like that? I don't feel that it does. Okay, I didn't think so. But it's I mean, it's fake. <laughs> uh, you know, when this started happening, uh, Patty actually said to me, "When this is done, can we watch some Criminal Minds? We watch <laughs> Criminal Minds as a palate cleanser palate for this cleanser. movie. <laughs> that's that's how messed up this movie is. Criminal Minds was a safer thing to watch before going to bed. A butt cleanser. Hey, there you go. Applause. He's the only one applauding, Brian." One out of no, three that, ain't bad. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. There, I got sixty-six point seven percent. You don't count because oh. you don't get to I... applaud yourself. Also, <laughs> uh, Milosh is back here flipping you off. So is Montrose. Jai Courtney's here too. None of them count. are approving of any of this. They don't count. Fuck them. <laughs> hey, we've just gone through the x lax stuff and all the pooping. So the next thing up is the ECW dick. I this was this was not good. No, no, no it wasn't. I, didn't, I didn't care for no. this one bit. This, this is the point in the movie, right? It was, it was good up until here. Oh, it, did well, you not notice? Good, but did this you... is where it passes the point where I'm did like, you... this isn't even. This is no longer like tolerable to watch. Like I this is just like. Before uh, we get to this awfulness, and I don't think it was just me. Did you notice that Tom Six let some brown coloring slip yes. through? Yes. Okay. Good. Uh -huh. It just wasn't me being traumatized and imagining that got color for one second yeah well it's like it's like that moment in schindler's list when you see the red red dress red dress right yeah that's <laughs> that's where you can compare schindler's list to human centipede two. well just, just are you just, happy brand just in so far as that's as there the, is that's the subtitle isn't it <laughs> that's <laughs> the subtitle of this movie is it because the first was human centipede first sequence human centipede two are you happy brent yes that's, very that's, Okay. I told I you, see, mean, you heard it's a more art. I just mean in so far as there is a black and white movie with one thing in color. <laughs> That's okay. all I meant. That is the extent of the comparison. <laughs> mm -hmm, sure. And Liam Neeson's in both movies. Yes. Um, he's the middle piece. <laughs> oh, I thought he was the. I thought he was uh, Martin. Because he had a particular set of skills. He's got oh. a particular. Set, I've got a particular set of tools. Sandpaper. Mm. Mostly <laughs> steak knives and pliers. Yep. Oh, uh, so yeah, barbed wire. Martin, yeah. there there is a fucking rape scene in here for absolutely no reason. No Martin reason. just wraps his dick in barbed wire and just starts. It's fucking already the, wrapped. It's pre-wrapped. Yeah, he just starts fucking the girl in the in the in the back of the centipede, and it's yeah, whatever. And I, Moving I, on. I thought he died of a heart attack during this. It seemed like it didn't. I thought he died because then. Out of nowhere, like an RKO, hey. the, the pregnant lady jumps up yeah. and takes off. What happens next, Nathan? <laughs> yeah, Nathan, go ahead. You tell us. Because I know this scene uh, was so not she, your favorite scene. Goes, <sighs> she, gets, uh, she gets out of the, uh, the, the warehouse. 
and uh, manages to get into. I think it's pretty. It's got to be Martin's car. Nobody else's. Yeah, I think so. And she's trying to get it started, trying to get it started, and she bursts her kid right out onto the floor as Martin comes out. He's not alive. He's not dead. He's alive, and he's he's pounding on the car, and she's birthed the baby. But the car starts, and she floors it and crushes her own offspring's head as she floors the car. Fuck this movie. Oh, uh, cherry on top for you right there. Good fucking God. Uh, There's that yeah. hashtag again. And then because... as she drives off, <laughs> Martin has a bit of a flip out. And then he's like, I need to compose myself. He doesn't say it. He just <gasps> woosahs for a second. Yeah. How dare you compare this to the art of bad boys too? The it art. Is just, it's just a catchphrase that's entered into popular culture now. Okay. Um, yeah, so, I mean, they they have a rape scene, and they're like, hmm, how can we top this? Let's kill an infant. Let's crush a baby's skull, sure. and they show it, too, like, vividly under the pedal and everything. Yeah, yeah, they sure do. Uh, so the, the centipede splits in two, because they find a way to, they, they manage to get separated a little bit. It was oh, the neighbor. It, the, it, the, it was the toughy guy. Yeah. Yeah. He manages to, to split himself off from the other part of the centipede. And let's just and let's just say it like it is. The rest of the movie is just him shooting everyone in the head or slitting their throats, yep. and then Ashley Yenny Ashley Yenny does manage to knock him down. I was like, yes, good, kill him. That should be the end that of the was movie. a weird thing <clears throat> where she like the lights go out, and then they come back on, and she has reared up like a cobra ready to strike and throws something at him. Yeah, and then doesn't she? Um, she she puts a funnel in his ass and puts yeah. the centipede down it, but so, that yes. also doesn't do anything to him, really. Um, and then he just stabs her in the head. And then, you know what? He's just back at his desk. No harm, no foul. Better luck next year. What? It was all in his head. It there was all a fucking what? dream. You didn't get that, Brendan? No. Yes. It, it cuts back to the, the shot from the beginning it's of the, the movie. the exact shot from the beginning yeah. of the movie. But I thought weird. that was just all. It was all a fantasy in his head. It was just like last week's episode. It, it was another kick straight to the nuts. Fuck this movie. I thought it was just the next day, and he was just back nope. to work. I got nope. you, Brennan, right here on Wikipedia. I can verify. That's what I was looking up too, because I was scene, I'm shocked by that. Just the scene cuts back to the toll booth with Martin watching the credits of the first sequence on his laptop with exactly the same reaction as the initial scene, implying that the events that followed had never actually happened. Wow, okay. Yep. And now I know why you hated the ending extra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I was waiting Holy for it. Shit. Yeah. yeah, I didn't I didn't catch that. Cause I maybe because in, in my head I was like, that would be really dumb if they did that. <laughs> the only thing I didn't notice, and maybe you did, Nathan, was was the baby crying in the beginning too? Because that was the only thing that's kind of weird. I don't remember the baby crying at the start. I'm not going back to rewatch. Well, I, mean, I know that. I'm just saying, do you remember? I don't remember it, no. But by <laughs> by this time, this movie, by the time that I got to this point, uh, I was in such a blind rage that I was dying to watch Criminal Minds. Oh, uh, I mean, hey. Good way to spend Friday night. Criminal Mind is all I ever want. Get that, get, that, get that money ready. Yeah, write that check. Yeah. Well... Luckily, guys, we have gotten to the end. That is Human Centipede 2. Um, this movie uh, really packed a wallet, made $142,000 at the box office. So there you go. <laughs> um, we will go around the horn. I'm sure it will be a big shocker as to everyone's opinions. But Brent, I will start with you since you are our guest. Um, would you say that this movie is the best thing you've ever seen? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> would you oh, say okay. that this movie is worth a watch? Uh, a drunk watch with friends? Would you commit head trauma or attempt head trauma to forget it, or would you avoid it like the plague? I think it is worth a watch if you don't like yourself. No, it's fuck this movie, man. You just attempt a head trauma if you were unfortunate enough to watch this movie. You know, the one thing about this I will say, and it may be weird after everything they've just heard, but the main complaint I have about this movie is that it's boring. <laughs> like, honest, like, I don't know if that's bad or not, but it's boring. I mean, it's it's very repetitive. Yeah, it's it, like I said, it's just him going in and killing people in a parking like a you know parking garage over and over again because it's like when you are so ridiculously over the top gory and that's all you're doing every single scene, it gets mm -hmm. old. 
Yeah. And then it just gets exploitive and then it just gets, you know, unnecessary and stupid. Um, so, Brent, because you were our guest on this episode, uh, what is your rating out of 10? Oh, the, like, home video. So I wrote yeah. it down. I was thinking about it. It had moments that made me laugh. I can't lie. So I was 9. like, I give, it, I give it a 2 out of 10. It's like, oh, wow. Strong. Because <laughs> there was a couple times I fucking burst the fuck out laughing. I can't lie. <laughs> All right. Well, I turn the floor over to Nathan. Uh, I'll just avoid let you answer. like the plague. Avoid, <laughs> avoid, avoid. Avoid the noid, as Nathan is saying. Yes, sir. And you know what? I am going on record right fucking now. Do it. You guys are probably waiting for this for Let's years go. and some change longer. <laughs> worse than Postal. This what? is the worst movie we've ever covered. Ever. I did it. I did it. Yes. <laughs> Cue the music, Brendan. I did it. Winner is you, <laughs> Brent. You now new challenge. New challenge oh, is open. Oh, I sh- don't. F- hey, you know there's a third one, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Four I, years. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably like next year. <laughs> <laughs> next Halloween, baby. Um, I don't think it's. I think the third one is scaled back a little bit. I don't think it's quite to the level of this one. Right, it takes place in a prison. I'll say that. So, um, yeah. I will say controversially that oh. this movie. You should avoid like the plague. Oh, okay. <laughs> this, yeah. is, this is I'm not I'm not at the same place where I think this is the worst thing we've ever covered. I still stand by cheerleader ninjas as being the worst fucking piece of shit oh, I've I ever seen. About that. But it's pretty close. It's all it's definitely in the conversation for me. Um, this movie is uh, fucking horrendous, and you should never watch it. And if you're gonna watch one of them, honestly, watch the first one. <laughs> even first though that's better. Like, it's a pile just of shit too. Or you know but... what? Just don't watch any of them. I mean, because right, but and, if you... and, and live a better life. But if you, ha- <laughs> I'm just saying, if you have to watch one of the two, watch under the first duress. One. Like if someone's gonna shoot you or something. <laughs> yes. Gun, gun to your head. Okay, that's if someone, okay. Yeah. If someone threatens you, threatens to put you in a human centipede, then just pick the first one. <laughs> yeah. I got a question, Brendan. Centipede to know. your head. Pick the first one. <laughs> what I don't know, mom. Me- Oh, hey, there you go. Because that's what happened to, to Martin. Yep. Got a centipede to the bomb. Also, Martin, better movie. <laughs> All, a oh, better it, sitcom yeah. as well. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a better sitcom than Human Centipede. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Guys, imagine oh, if they shit. just put a laugh track in this movie. <laughs> they could. I laughed a lot. <laughs> just Brent laughing. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every time. Uh, Brent, you I were going to say something. Oh, yeah. I, got, I don't know if Nathan can answer it because I don't know if he's actually seen it, but I know you can because you made me watch it. So, oh. Human Centipede 2, better than the Serbian film. Like, in terms of the movie? Which one would you rather watch, Brendan? Like, what's better? Oh, which one would I rather watch? Or eat, no, <laughs> both. Just overall, which one? Which one better? I think a, hmm, I think yeah. the Serbian film is actually a better constructed movie. It is. But. But, yeah. I would rather watch this movie. Okay, better question. Human Centipede 2, better than, uh, what is it? Yes. Okay, I had a No feeling. question. Well, no, that one had animal ki- murder and blackface, so yeah, I would rather watch this too, actually. And it was also, su- had super gross shit too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. It's you're lucky. Crispin Glover art house film that only played where he took it. Oh and, and, we, and we got hold of it somehow. And I said, Brent, I remember barely watching this. Let's watch it. <laughs> and I regret the day. <laughs> oh, yeah. You Go make listen. some awful life choices. Yeah. When me, when me and him get together, it's all fucked up, man. Every it's time. All fucked up. So much <laughs> banana porn. All exactly. right. Exactly. <laughs> we're going to take a break. We talked about the movie and we're going to talk about it some more. We'll be right back. What were they? And we're back. Yeah. 
We are back. Yes, that's right. We are back. It is time to dim the lights. Uh, switch that dial over to NPR. Uh, Nathan, who's our uh, sponsor this week? Our sponsor this week is Raid. When you have a centipede problem, Raid is who mm. you call. It doesn't now. I just a disclaimer. They want us to read this too. It doesn't work as well on human centipedes, though. That's just right. they wanted us to mention that. You can still try. You you can. You can certainly blind them. Um. So it is time for the low haiku, Nathan. Why don't you tell the good people what the low haiku is all about? Well, the low haiku is 17 perfect syllables to describe the insufferable crime that we've talked about for the last, I don't know, hour, 20 minutes. Okay. Um, And so as our guest, uh, Brent, I understand you brought a pair of haikus along for the ride. I like to overachieve. You you go right ahead. You give us your two haikus. Haiku number one. Mm-mm. Ass to mouth. Oh yeah. Crushed up baby in car. Oh yeah. Movie sucks. Oh yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And haiku number two. Haiku two. Oh, that's why he's mad. It wasn't the centipede. He just has small balls. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Very good. We're going to have to uh, check with the sensor before airing that, of course. I'm sorry. Uh, Nathan, uh, I'm, I'm certain that you wrote down your thoughts in haiku form. I did. I did. I okay. did. <clears throat> no fucking words here. Tom's sick should be fucking killed. Fuck this fucking film. And I thought I was bad. Sometimes it's the only word that fits. Exactly. All right. I will uh, read my haiku. Uh, this is a... Uh, okay, here we go. <clears throat> the first line is, is uh, in, in relation to the first Human Centipede film. <clears throat> this one is gory. Human Centipede fanboy. I still hate Tom Six. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah! Hey! Hey, what's the weather like out there, Brent? It's hot as fuck, pretty. Hey, hey, hey. Ding, dong, ding, 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 ding. Toilet flushing sound. <laughs> oh, well, that's the those that's the poetry section of the podcast. But Nathan, we uh, we talk about this movie, but uh, well, you might want to take our word for it. But what do we always say? Well, we do always say... Don't take a word for us! That's right. That's what we say. Do not take our word for it. Well, you know, you should. But anyway, Nathan, uh, what are the... um, How many of the critics uh, enjoyed this particular film? Far too many of them. Mm. Uh, 29%. (laughs) 29% of the credit. Out of 82. Out of yeah, 82. 80, 82 reviews. There you go. Mm. And, and what about the audience? Also, way too many at 23% out of 10,000 plus ratings. So, guys, that means that 2,300 people said, this movie's pretty good. <laughs> mm. But if you like this, mm. you might like Chain Letter. Okay. Uh, Bio Dead. Okay. House. Hey. That's not the not one, the one with is. Richard Mall. Or the Japanese uh, one. Aww. From Within. Oh. And mm. The Black Waters of Echo Pond. I've oh. seen one of these. Which one did you see? Chain Letter. Oh. Oh, okay. I think it's got Tony Todd in it. So uh, I gotta say, The Black so Water, The Black Water of Echo's Pond. I like how it's like. Uh, possessive echoes. <laughs> so it's like there's this guy named Echo and he has a pond. Uh, okay, well those are those are the movies you might like. But um, let's dive right in. Let's talk about some uh, what the critics are saying here. Uh, here. Let's see here. We got uh, Robbie Collin of the Daily Telegraph in the UK mm-hmm. says it would be unfair to say the film is completely without merit, but what little there is is drowned out by its blaring vileness. Mm. One out of five. Ah. Well, uh, I, the late, great Ken Hankey 
Oh, he loved it, right? Uh, this may have been the thing that killed him. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> he writes, perhaps the most vile, repellent, repulsive, depraved, degraded, debased, and plain ugly movie I've ever seen. Point five out of five. All right. I'm guessing there's some sort of weird thing from the Mountain Express out of Asheville, North Carolina, that would not let him give it a zero or negative review. <laughs> Brent, what 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 are your critics saying there? Something right for Nathan. I got a fresh review from Anton Battelle from Scene 360. Report him. Report him. <laughs> Says Martin may lack his role model surgical skills, professional tools, scientific interests, or concern of clinical hygiene, but in all, but in all his sick and sweaty go- grotesquerie, Martin is us. <laughs> all right. Um, I've got one from uh, Scott Weinberg of The Horror Show. He says, most children give up their poop obsession by age four. Tom Six still hasn't. Ah. <laughs> Uh, Wesley Morris from the Boston Globe noted all six is going for with a serious application of both hardware supplies to the skin and feces to the camera is a tired commentary on the shallow talents. They're excremental zero out of five. There you go. I got an- another fresh review for Nathan. <laughs> Report that person as well. Rob, get them on the list. <laughs> Rob Humanick says i'll grant my i'll grant benefit of the doubt right before i huddle in the fetal position he ease my fractured soul for a few hours of fraggle rock <laughs> that's a fresh review so fraggle rock what <laughs> he wants to he wants to ease his soul with fraggle rock okay yeah all right my last critics review is uh from let's see here uh from Derek malcolm of the london evening standard this is one for you brent ah. uh I'll get him on the list uh, th- there are there are echoes of David Lynch's Eraserhead Ooh. during the more scary, nightmarish moments, but Ooh. six soon resorts to shock tactics, which is that's exactly actually, what I said. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Chris Hewitt from the St. Paul Pioneer Press. I'm assuming it's out of St. Paul, Minnesota. He writes, um, "It's profoundly unpleasant and unfortunately part of a trilogy." There you go. One out of four. All right, hit us with that last critic, Brent. Yet another fresh review for Nathan. <laughs> Simon Moraldo from Quick Flicks says, Full sequence could be considered an interesting counterpart to Gus Van Sant's Elephant, but what it lacks... What? In- <laughs> but what it lacks in the subtlety of Van Sant's film, it makes up with scenes of genital mutilation. What? What? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> that one made me mad. <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> I can Gus Van Sant's elephant. Get the fuck out of here. All right. Enough about enough from the critics. Let's let's hear what the people in the snake pit said. I am uh, a little terrified to see what they said, <laughs> but uh, let's mm. let's dive into the audience reviews. Um, this first one is interesting. Um, it's from Riley K. And Riley says, "Wow, this movie was a breath of fresh air in the romance genre. <laughs> I'm so I'm so used to seeing Sylvester Stallone in these movies that I'm sad he's gone." I think the cast, consisting of Mia Khalifa, Jason Statham, and what? Rocket Man, was decently acted. However, Sylvester Stallone not being in it is too much to Blair Witch. But I'm happy he's moved on to the Spy <laughs> Kids franchise. Man, I, Jared. Tim Horton's 2009. Did that person have a stroke? Yeah. Well, they watched Human Centipede 2, so. I, it actually, now that I'm looking at it, it, it says Sylvester Stone. So I don't know who that is. <laughs> moved on to the Spy Kids franchise? Yeah, Sylvester Stone moved on to the Spy Kids franchise. Jason Statham? And Mia Khalifa. <laughs> Where'd she come from? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Sylvester Stallone was in Spy Kids 3D. But I don't know who Sylvester Stone is. Well, my my first uh, audience review comes from Robert P. I can only assume it's Robert Pattinson. And uh, he's terribly confused because he writes, what a disgusting movie when three people are stitched together. One and a half out of stars. Robinson, that was the first one. 
He probably saw it and was like, I've seen the second one. I know what it is. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got one for you right here. From M. Ryan 15, 10 out of 10, a masterpiece. Oh, oh good old IMDb. Yeah. Yes, sir. I was really disappointed with the first human centipede. This one, however, lives up to the hype. If you don't like sick movies, this film is not for you. This film deserves 10 stars because it only exists to sicken the audience, which it does very well. I only mention that because over half of the negative reviews of this film say the movie is just sick. Lawrence R. Harvey played his role so well. So, well, you'd think he'd be like that in real life. This is not a film to, <laughs> this is not a film to watch and see a good plot or character development. You only watch this movie if you like disgusting or gory films or to be shocked. It's definitely one of the nastiest films out there, and it is better than films like August Underground's Mortem or, and Slaughtered Vomit Dolls because this is a well-made film. I'd say see it if you're interested in it. And 27 out of 47 people found that review helpful. Well, not so great, buddy. Not so great. Not so helpful. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, this is from Anonymous. Um, and this is, this is I'm just reading it as it's written here. Mm. Uh, film review of Humane Centipede 2 by famous reviewer P.P. Harper. P.P. Yep. Wow. This one stinks. It was horrific and scary, but also kind of funny. For example, she really did put her butt in his mouth. Ha ha. <laughs> it was pretty good, though, but not for a child to watch. Definitely shouldn't let the <laughs> child watch. Anyway, this isn't really a good one, and the children shouldn't stay far away from this one. Very violent and sexy. Pretty gross. All in all, not for the children to watch. Definitely four and a half out of stars. Did he say definitely sexy? He said very violent Shit. and sexy. Ugh. And he said the Ooh. children shouldn't watch it and then changed his mind at the end. Yeah, so I noticed that. Uh, Shyamalan at this shit. Quick oh. aside before I get to my next Snake Pit review. About a year ago, or maybe it was a little longer than that, because our exchange about this has been going on for about four years. Uh, yes. Well, it was a Halloween. And it was around spooky time and... Uh, getting ready to Cheyenne, my oldest one, wanted to watch horror movie. So we start cruising through the horror movie section on uh, Netflix. And mm -hmm. at that time, uh, the Human Centipede movies were on Netflix. And uh, she uh, says, oh, uh, what's Human Centipede? I'm like, we are not watching Human Centipede. There is no way I am ever letting her watch those under under my uh, on my watch. She grows up, she moves out, she gets her own place, gets her own Netflix subscription, Watch it all you want, sweetheart. But there's no way in hell I'm ever going to be called out to be responsible for having you seen the Human Centipede movies. <laughs> anyway, and, and then you watch them together. Yes. No, I was saying, and, and then we watch the next one in Overdrive. Um, so my we next one <laughs> comes from uh, Jason S. I can only assume it's Jason Statham. Right. And he writes, This film in many ways surpasses the original and had a lot of potential. Beautifully short and artsy and moody, but it's complete lack of humanity and over the top depravity is not fit for human consumption. Two and a half out of stars. <laughs> it's a little lengthy, but bear with me. All right. <laughs> but um, <laughs> from <laughs> from Jamarly, ten out of ten. My absolute favorite underrated movie. This movie gets so much shit thrown in his face when it's completely unjustified. <laughs> the only thing that people actually see in this movie is a psycho stitching together people's buttholes to other people's mouths. But this is just what the uneducated splatter fan sees. Once you take a deep look into the movie, you will find just how brilliant it actually is. It is the sequel to the first movie, which was flat out trash. But it's trash on purpose. The second movie is a lot more credible. Uh, though taking this movie as an actual movie. I, I was weirdly worried. Though <laughs> through the action, the fourth wall is broken, making the movie even more realistic. The uncomfortable and forced proximity towards the disgusting protagonist makes the viewer really uncomfortable, again, on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> through his black and white, though his black and white look at this movie, whoa, through its black, what? Fuck you for typing that wrong. <laughs> through its black and white look, this movie starts to become a lot more up to imagination. Splatter effects are enhanced through that. Something a lot of people have noticed as well is the fact that this movie is an accurate psychological analysis of the mind of a serial killer. Everything from the protagonist being sexually abused by his father to him being an outcast of society is accurately pictured with the proper consequences these actions have on an individual on a psychological level. 
his urge to play the divine creator for once, his non-physical love for children and babies, as well as his insecurity in his love and sex life, his masochistic tendencies, and his apathesis for the... <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know that word, I'm sorry. For the original movie, just to seal the deal. This is such an incredible movie, yet you have to not only watch part one and two in a sequel in order to understand just why this movie is so great, but you also need some psychological background knowledge. The only shame about this movie is that it had to force a third part. There was no necessity for that. This movie sequel was closed within itself. And 11 out of 19 people found that review helpful. I actually said to Brendan <laughs> on Messenger, I'm going to give you a quote. This is not one of this is not an audience review. This is directly from me after I advised him that we had a new worse. And uh, he said, I hated it. And I said, there is no call for any of this. <laughs> Everything so far, gas pedal baby and all, no <laughs> need of it. None whatsoever. How many Please. people found that helpful, Nathan? <laughs> I think everybody, if they hear my pleas, will find that very helpful. All right. All right, here we go. Um, let's see. Ben L. Uh, so I can assume, only assume that's, uh, I don't know. Do we know a Ben L? Ben, no. ben L. Ben Lover. Ben Lover. Ben, ben Lover. Um, that's Bin Laden's lover. Uh, <laughs> so <it's, laughs> there, there is a difference between horror and straight up psychopathic dreams. This movie is a dream of a psychopath in the film and in real life. Oh, look, he gave away the ending. Tom Six is a sick man. We need to stop supporting these films. They're scarring and just plain disturbing. Babies should not be used in such a way in film. I think he thinks that the baby was actually crushed. I said the <laughs> same thing. I said the same thing for a Serbian film. Sometimes the human brain should not be explored. Tom Six needs help and lots of it. Half a star. Also, Ben Lover is the um, the brother of Ed Lover. So, yeah. so yeah. there you go. Oh, I thought he was the brother of Lover Boy, who yeah, that's his actual name is Boy, comma, Lover. Um, that's a band from like Comox, BC or something. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> we should investigate. Oh, well, maybe. That's not. Speaking of investigations, my next review comes from Dennis O. I can only assume it's Dennis Oland. Uh, and he writes, this is a real piece of shit. Do not watch the first one. Was not too bad. This one was, I have no idea what this one was. Can't find the right words. Do yourself. And it's yourself is not one word in this situation. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do yourself a favor. Uh, don't watch this movie. If you watch the first one, pretend this one was never made. Half out of stars from Dennis Oland. From Mimi and Kaka? I think that's oh, how that Jesus. <laughs> Oh, this shit, they reviewed this on my damn birthday last year. Okay, 10 out of Mimi 10. Mimi and Kaka, my favorite radio show. Damn right. On my birthday, shout out to y'all. 10 out of 10. The first horror movie I couldn't watch until... Oh, I'm sorry, I got... I'm going to read it the way they wrote it. The first horror movie I can't watch till the end. I must admit, this movie is awesome. The main character does not speak a word. It is made in black and white. Not too much sound effect or jump scares, but it's scary. I am a horror movie fan, and I have spent my whole youth to watch them. Some scary, some bloody, but this one is truly disgusting. Open mouth smiley face. I wonder how the writer can come up with such these ideas. I can't. I give it a 10 because I can't handle it. And I don't know how it goes, and I also don't want to know. Laugh out loud. Two out of three people found our review helpful. <laughs> Did he actually write laugh out loud? No, it's L O L. Oh, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I've got one more here, guys. One more review. All right. And it's a quick one from David D. Um, David Dunn, the character from Unbreakable, ah. played by Bruce Willis. And he says, a must see. It's in black and white for a reason. The main character, Martin, is too gorgeous and his body is way too sexy to be in full color. Check it out or suck it. Five stars. <laughs> My last one comes from Christian C. I can only assume it's a former TNA champion, Christian Cage. Of course. Uh, yeah. And he writes, so I've been crazy about horror movies since I was five years old. I've seen almost every one you can think of. I love over-the-top blood and gore, for example, <coughs> Saw, Hostel, I Spit on Your Grave, but this movie is over-the-top, and I have 
a very strong stomach. And this movie has become the most graphic and most gruesome movie I've ever seen. Congrats, Tom Six. Half out of stars. And if you Mm. didn't know, now you know. (laughs) And that's Mm. the Pete show. Okay, this is gonna be fun. I'm I'm gonna I'm read this exactly like it's fucking written, bro. Jesus Christ! <laughs> you know you, you're not bolstering. You're you're you know, saying these people are right when all their stuff is filled with inaccurate verbiage and terrible typos. But please oh. proceed. <laughs> I was trying so hard not to fucking die as y'all was reading this, but from Kozak seven five one eight one. This is actually reviewed earlier this year. Nine nine out of ten. A movie about fight for dreams. <laughs> All right. This movie is showing this movie is showing a beautiful fight for dreams for casual humans. <laughs> Normal person try to be like his hero in his favorite rights movie, although he isn't a hero. <laughs> But he is trying his best to create a perfect creature. I have to add that the drams sometimes require sacrifices. One out of one person. <laughs> one out of one? Are you the one? Yeah, it probably was him. No, but now it's two because I liked it. <laughs> what is happening right now? <laughs> I'm screenshotting the fuck out of that. I need that for Do you see, people, (laughs) listeners, what this movie is doing to us? Fuck. Brent, it killed Brent. I could feel my bald spot getting bigger just having talked about this movie for as long as we have. I thought you were going to say you could feel your balls going back up inside (laughs) you. No, my bald spot. My bald spot. Oh, my God. Oh. Well, as uh, oh, as Brent tries to uh, breathe again, um, those are the reviews of this yeah. movie. And Nathan is dramatically crumpling up that notepad, and oh my God. it's gone. Gone. Out of my life forever. So, now that we're through that, um, Brent, I want to uh, I want to thank you very much for coming on the show. <laughs> thank you for having me. Man. Don't want to <laughs> thank you for giving us this movie. I'll, I'll be back for part three. <laughs> Well, you'll be back before, before that, I hope, because that's oh, a year I, away. Well, I don't know. Nathan might not want me back for a while. <laughs> hey, you know what? There's only one more. So, oh, there's and so from first. Everything I've heard, this is uh, this oh. one is the bottom of the barrel in regards to the trilogy. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. so too. But Brent, uh, thank you very much for coming on um, once again. Uh, you also have a, a radio show slash podcast where you talk about stuff. Yes, as we record this, our The Evil Dead episode just came out. And if you're a fan of that episode, I implore you to listen because you might be upset. B- but not for me, I'll say. Cover original or remake or both? The 1981. Okay. The original. It's PJ had never seen it before. It's his first time watching it, so. Yeah. But, yeah, Home Video House, so we put out episodes every Friday. We talk about random shit. We just put movies into a bag and I make PJ pick them out. There's no rhyme or reason. It's just whatever I feel like throwing in that shit. We used to have all these cards and all that. We just said, fuck it. We just throwing movies in bags now. And we're doing a Halloween hustle right now. And I can say one, two, three. There's four movies this month that PJ has never seen before. That might be the most ever in one month. So you might want to check that out because he might make you mad. I've already told you. I'm, I'm literally going to order him a bulletproof vest off Amazon. He, he not a big fan of the horror genre? Oh, just not good ones okay <laughs> i don't know you know, man you say good but i feel there's a big amount of air quotes around that 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 good like, that we're not I, seeing because this is a podcast and not a visual medium what week is this coming out i'll give you slight spoilers this is uh you, you hit me with that fucking calendar shit uh <laughs> this is the third week of october okay okay so i could give you the two the, the two main ones i wanted to say the evil dead is out the next movie he, we, we did after that was Alien, the original one. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, wait until you hear that shit. Because, yeah, <laughs> he's going he's gonna to get... I, I, I'll just... I, a slight spoiler. I just asked him at the end of the show, how many more fan bases will he piss off? That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so, yeah, you might want to check that out. But, yeah, every Friday. And then we put videos out every Wednesday. We, that's where we pick the movies out. And costumes were brought out this month. And possibly next month. 
So yeah, we having fun. And if you're a close eagle eyed viewer in the YouTube videos, you may see a certain Canadian pop up in the intro. Hey. He's in there now. So yeah, home video hustle. Follow us on Twitter at capital H, capital V, capital H, capital P, lowercase i cast, HVH podcast on Twitter with one D, because that's all you really need at the end of the day is one D. Unless and, and only two <laughs> inches, right, Nathan? Right. Well, that's what I've been told. Yeah. Hey. Motion in the ocean, fuck the length. That's how we roll. <laughs> <laughs> but we on we on Instagram, we're on Facebook, YouTube. So you're a part Irish, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody talk shit, I kick your ass. But uh, I tried, I tried the accent. I don't know if that worked. But um, uh, yeah, fuck it. Just type home video hustle with some online shit. You'll find it somewhere. If you, if you listen to this just now and we're like, I want to hear more of that shit, you'll get a lot more of that shit on home video hustle. There you go. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right. Well, uh, Nathan is, is uh, Montrose around to say a few words. He sure is. Uh, I'm sure he, right. he. I mean, also, I want to say good attempt, but uh, it was never going to happen. No, oh, I, I suppose he's better than that, I guess. Uh, I'll get him just a minute. Okay. Hello. It's your good friend Montrose Monkington III here, and you can't fool me. I knew, no, I knew not to go anywhere near this film, if you can even call it that. Uh, I would like to invite all of you to watch uh, some really good things uh, where nobody is stitched to anybody, nor are there any babies crushed under gas pedals uh, in any of my videos. Uh, and all those videos are, are fun things about the wrestling and the graps, and that's all over on Montrose Monkington TV. Uh, and you can actually be friends with me on Facebook uh, under the group uh, Montrose Monkington the Third Esquire and Friends, and if you'd like to tweet at me and say thank you, Montrose, thank you for not featuring any crushed babies or stitched together people, uh, you could do that on Twitter at the handle at Montrose the Third. That's the number three R D. Thank you. More later. Hey, hey, my, my Montrose, before you go. Got a question. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, Montrose, you always fall for this. <laughs> no, it's, it's legit. I, 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 I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to learn. I don't want to okay. be ignorant. Okay. Okay. There's a popular phrase that people like to use, Montrose, and it's people like to go ape shit. Right. Now, if I was to go to somebody, I'm like, yo, I'm about to go ape shit. Is that racist? No, it, what I believe what it means actually is you're about to go so crazy that you were going to start flinging poop. Okay. That's how crazy you're about to go. It's not racist because apes actually do, and the while they they throw their feces. So so if I said that and then I reached my hand up my ass and I pulled out the shit and I started flinging it, I'm just I, that's protocol. You would literally be going ape shit at that point. Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure. See, I'm trying to get, get the shit right. Glad I could help. Thank you. I More later. Okay, nothing about uh, Kelsey there that time. Um, I see you thought that's how the yes I get your ass. <laughs> Next, time. I do. Uh, I do want to talk about good things. Uh, now that we talked about uh, Human Centipede two, so we're gonna go around the horn. This is Nathan's favorite segment, of course. Uh, he introduced it. He brought it to the podcast. It's catching fire. All the albums are selling really well. We're going double platinum. Oh, we want to know what you guys are watching. So, so Brent. Uh, pick something out. i know you watch a lot so uh, uh, narrow it down give us something what are you uh watching bud i did just watch debbie does dallas too for my twitter followers that's your <laughs> recommendation <laughs> i mean if if you are into the pornography then maybe but no i actually have a real recommend and it's for it's, nathan you need to watch this if you haven't seen it yet i think this would be right up your alley there's a called movie called human centipede three yes but not right now it's called uh winter beast have you heard of that i've not so it's one of the movies I got in the Vinegar Syndrome package. It's in a Homegrown Horrors Volume 1 box set. It's like, I think it's, fuck, I forget what year it came out. But it's basically, it's a low-budget-ass movie about, like, a monster terrorizing and killing, like, park rangers in the forest. But the monster is claymation. And so it'll go okay. from, it's a shot, like, there's a part where there's a guy rappelling down a mountainside and he gets stuck. And he, they show the monster, like, reach down. And when he grabs the fucking person, it looks like, what's the motherfucker, Mr. Bill on Saturday Night Live? Like, it looks like the <laughs> fakest oh, ass. Oh, no. It looks just like that. And then he'll, like, rip the head off and then be, like, claymation, like, blood and shit. It's hilarious. Okay. All like, right. I, I think, Winter Nathan, Beast. you would get a kick out of that one. I'll have to look around for Winter it. Beast. It's not on anything. It's not like on, like, Shudder or anything like that, is it? 
Well, I mean, I own it, so if you, <laughs> you know. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hit you up later. Uh, Nathan, <laughs> what about you? Uh, what you uh, watch, bud? Well, uh, as I promised uh, earlier, uh, I would talk about what I was watching, and I recently took the uh, the daunting task of watching both parts of In Search of Darkness on Shutter. Ah. These are super documentaries, and I don't mean, well, they're, they're really, really good, but I mean, mm. when I say super documentaries, they're like four hours long a piece. It's like eight hours if you're going to watch back to back, but if you are a fan of the genre, it is a fantastic fountain of information. Uh, they they cover everything from like the the most mainstream stuff, Freddy, Jason, Michael, Myers, uh, Chucky, and all that, all down to like the the weird you know culty stuff, any stuff from Charles Band, uh, Reanimator, Castle mm. Freak, mm. Uh, a lot of like Argento and other Italian horror movies. If again, it, we've got uh, there's interviews on there from like. Robert England, Kane Hodder, and even uh, one time guest of the podcast, uh, Kelly Maroney. Hey. I talk about say Kelsey Mauro. No, oh. they talk about <laughs> Chopping Mall and Night of the Comet and all that stuff. Yeah. Brent, they talk if, about Chopping Mall, not shotting. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. shotting. Shotting Mall. mall. That needs so to if, make that. If you, if you do like 80s horror movies and you want to kind of learn some, uh, not. In like it's not so much that it's in depth, super in depth with every movie, but if you want to hear some like fun stories and some interesting behind the scenes stuff that happened in things like Maniac Cop and Evil Dead Two, they've got all kinds of interviews uh, in it. They've got clips from it, and you might even find some movies that you didn't even really know existed. So, uh, in in Search of Darkness one and two, both on Shutter. If you got some uh, time to fill, check them out. All right. I was mad because I wanted those are Kickstarter things and I wanted to put money into it, but I didn't have any at the time because that shit looked like it was going to be good. So I need to actually watch those. So and what about you there, uh, Brendan? What are you watching, bud? Uh, well, I watched a little um, 80s horror that I've always been curious about. This isn't like a full throated recommendation, but it was pretty good. Um, it's a movie uh, called Waxwork. Uh, ah, okay. A movie starring uh, Zach Galligan from uh, the Gremlins uh, Gremlins movies. I mean, it kind of reminds me of like a proto House of Wax in a way, although a lot more creative, I think, because like they go to this uh, wax museum in the middle of the night. Um, and more when homage because House of Wax, the original one was back in the 50s. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it actually kind of reminded me of the remake, though, um, yeah. which I think was pretty different from the original one. But um Anyway, I think this one's more like more imaginative, but they go into this wax museum um, and all the wax sculptures like at first I thought, okay, the wax sculptures come to life and try to kill people, yada, yada, yada. But it's more interesting than that because they get sucked into like the world where those sculptures would exist. So like there's a Dracula and they go in and like, you know, there's vampires and shit. Uh, They're in like a whole Transylvanian world. And it's really cool because like it's clearly got a smaller budget, but they make the most of it. And it's there's some really great effects and uh, it's really fun and it's funny and it doesn't take itself too seriously. Tongue in cheek, all that good stuff. So, yeah, check out Waxwork. I think it's on Shudder. They cover it in Into Darkness as well as a really fun bit of trivia about the Gremlins movie. Oh, there you go. Is it controversial to say that I like the second one better? It's probably a hot take. Are y'all excited for the reboot I heard they making? Sure. We'll no. see what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say no, Nathan? I said no. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm willing to give anything a chance, honestly. Oh, I'm, I'm not, I'll give it a chance. Doesn't mean I have to be excited for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not like waiting at the ticket. I'm not waiting at the fucking ticket gate or anything, but like. <laughs> That's because you pre ordered them, see? Nope. I waited for the ticket gate four <laughs> days in advance every Box movie. office? Nope. I called the ticket gate. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> yeah. I'm from the 50s. Yeah, see? <laughs> Or the 30s, I guess. I'll say the 50s? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm from the 50s, but I actually time traveled from the 30s. It's a really complicated oh. character that I'm trying out. <laughs> it's called Time Traveling Gangster in the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta shorten that title a little bit. Time yeah. Cop. It's yeah, like, see? <laughs> Rock, Rock Hudson, what's his deal, son? <laughs> <laughs> Doris yeah. Day, Pillow Talk. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> 
He only knows Rock Hudson and Doris Day movies. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Brent, again, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me here. Fuck up your show once again. Uh, you do not <laughs> fuck up this show. Oh, there's You're some listener, guest. There's some listeners somewhere that see my name and they're like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> not that guy. Well, they can <laughs> suck it ooh. from the back. Ooh, ooh. Um, <laughs> but we uh, we are on all the podcast apps, of course. We are also on Age of Radio. Big time. Along with our guest here, Brent. Damn um, right. We're on Twitter, Instagram at WWTT Podcast. Uh, you can find us on Patreon, patreon.com slash WWTT Podcast. You can find us on Tee Public, uh, Redbubble. Uh, we're on uh, TikTok too. So check us ah. out there. Um, we are also, uh, we host on Facebook, of course. You can search for us. You can search for our Facebook group, What Were They Thinking Interactive? And that about wraps it up. So I guess, um, Nathan, you look like you have a few questions. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. All right. Given, given everything I was, I was e- ever taught as a child in Sunday school. Wow. We're going deep with this one, man. And, and, you know, all the things that, you know, parents and, and pastors ha- have told me about the existence of a benevolent and caring God. Oh no. <laughs> and, and and in a world where you know there there are so many people who do so many selfless and and caring and and and, and uh, just altruistic things. And and this movie is allowed to be made and continues to exist. I I really I I've got to know. Lay it on me. What were they thinking? <laughs>